The book is The Sellout, How Three Decades of Wall Street Greed and Government Mismanagement Destroyed the Global Financial System. With us today, Charles, Charlie Gasparino is joining us. And I've got to tell you, uh, it's a pleasure having you. Welcome to Syracuse, first of all. Pleasure having you on the set of Financial Fitness. Uh, I'm a fan. Watch you on CNBC. You. Those of you who uh, uh, might uh, recognize Charlie, he's certainly an on-air contributor on CNBC, freelance writer for a number of publications, New York Post, among others. A lot of history there, but in the time we've got, I want to get right into it and just say thank you for joining us. Um, first things first, you know, it just occurred to me, thinking about getting together with you, here we are about a year after it all hit the fan, right. if, you, if you'll pardon that expression. A year later, and, and as I think about it, certainly we had some disasters in the past, crash of 87, the events of 9-11, but I wanted your context on where we're at currently. Th this just seems to be an even worse or bigger problem than what we've had in the past. Well, you know, what I say in this book simply is that, you know, it didn't happen in, in a day or a year or, you know, a weekend that Lehman failed. It was a much, it took a long time for the problem, and the problem is this sort of accumulation of these incredibly toxic assets on the balance sheets of these big banks, mm -hmm. which you know rendered them just about all of them insolvent. Uh, it took much longer than that. It took about 30 years mm -hmm. for that to hit this sort of this mother load that we ha that we faced in 2008. It and again, though, it, it impacting not just Wall Street here, but individual investors. My goodness, right. if you had a 401k plan or a retirement account across the board, real estate, everything. It was it was it, it, it was the, the it was the complete circle being drawn of of risk that was embraced not just by the financial sector but by Main Street. I mean, if you think about it, what's at the bottom of the, of the financial implosion was the fact that you had bonds that were packed with mortgages that were essentially given to people that didn't really have the means to pay back those mortgages. I mean, that's at mm -hmm. bottom what happened. So not only were individual investors leveraging up, buy, you know, basically borrowing to buy homes at, at rates mm -hmm. they couldn't afford, but the Wall Street firms were buying securities because they thought they would, they would yield a lot of money and putting them on their balance sheet, that were in, and they were leveraged up with that. Let me, if I could, try to go backwards just a minute to what you said, because I think a lot of folks look at this as, as an event that happened in 2008. Right on the title. Your book says, right. no, no, years, decades in 30 the 30 years. I mean, it be, listen, if you, there, there have been at least four bond market blowups of, of smaller magnitude, but of similar circumstance since, the, since 1980. You had one in 86, 87, one in 1994, and a fairly significant one in 1998 mm -hmm. when long-term capital mm -hmm. imploded and could have took down the rest of Wall Street with it because they were investing in the same you know, crummy bonds that long-term capital invested in. Um, what the book basically shows is that each and every time the bond market blew up, the federal government came in and bailed out Wall Street, either through a direct intervention, like bailing out long-term capital, mm -hmm. And a combination. Although other firms came to their rescue as well, did they not? Well, what they a lot did of Wall was, Street firms get, got together. Well, what they did was the Fed and the Treasury put everybody in the room and said, let's figure this out. And it was, it was, it was a way of, of utilizing Wall Street to, to bail out, you know, to put up their own capital mm -hmm. to bail out. But the Fed was there with guarantees and easy money. So I, what I tried to show is that by throwing that easy money at the problem over 30 years, and I show this, this is a narrative book. This is about the people that did that. Mm -hmm you've created a system where any risk can be taken because there's no consequence to risk mm -hmm. until you had, in 2008, so much risk in the system that the system was really and see, uh, seizing I, up. I, I could do three shows with you, but, but get, get, staying on this for a minute, you're, you're getting into the topic I wanted to go, and that is we're going to talk about Wall Street in a second and all the problems, the greed, right. at times the stupidity of, of Wall Street. Right. But it wasn't just, we're all focused on Wall Street, but it wasn't really just Wall Street. You mentioned the government. You, right. I mean, a lot of entities played into this. Yeah, and, you know, Wall Street, what is Wall Street? I mean, it's, a, it's Wall Street's the banking system. I mean, there's a reason why banks aren't lending to small businesses right now. The reason why is because they still have this stuff on their books, mm. and that's the scary part. This stuff, this, this crisis is abated. But it could come back, and you got to ask yourself, what could make it come back? Well, you know, unemployment c continue to, to to rise to 11 percent. Mm -hmm. If that happens, people are going to default on their mortgages, on their on their loans that are packed into these bonds. That could cause Citigroup, for example, to have to go back to the government for more money, mm -hmm. and that would be a major problem. If the banking, you have to look look at the Dow right now. The Dow is rising; it's around 10,000, a little bit above. What's what's pushing the Dow up? Well, the main driver of the Dow rising. I believe, and I'd like to hear your opinion about this, is the fact that everybody thinks the banking system is, is getting better. Mm -hmm. And banking stocks are rising with, and rise, bringing up everything else with it's it. It's been because, a great sector this year, as you know. Right, because the theory is if banks get better, if the financing firms get better, they can, they can make loans, they can mm -hmm. finance things. 
Uh, suppose in a couple months we find out that the banking system is not better. Now think about how mm -hmm. that reverberates through the economy. Not only will the Dow go down, not only will people's 401ks get crushed, uh, banks still won't be lending money to mm -hmm. small businesses that we need to keep to, to basically get out of this hole that we're in. Did your research in in putting this book together lead you in that direction, or are you just well, saying what No, if? no, I, it led in that direction because, you know, you all you have to realize is, listen, here's the thing. What happened last year was a bailout. The, those securities are still on the books of the banks. You know, the government gave capital to the, the banks to keep them afloat, but they didn't do anything with those securities. They never sold those securities. They wrote them down. They, they reduced the value where they took a hit on the bottom line, but they still haven't got rid of them. And by the way, if they haven't got rid of them, that means they can go down further. Mm -hmm. All right, let me just stick with the blame game just for a second, though, because we can't, we can't eliminate people, you and I, individual investors, homeowners, for doing a, a, a lot of bad things for a long time, too. Oh, Didn't that I, contribute? Well, as, absolutely. I mean, you make fifty thousand dollars a year. You know, what under what sort of uh, you know scenario do you think you can afford a house worth five hundred thousand dollars? Well, because, and, the, and because have, the bank said you could. I could walk in and they well, would throw money at me. That was ha half the uh, well, problem. Just because they say you can. Yeah. I, well, I mean, no. It's the, the whole thing is this. Listen, I. I I bought a house in 2004, kind of like in the middle of this whole thing. And yeah, I could have, you know, the guy said to me, well, you know, you can get this, buy this big house, we'll give you this, this jumbo loan and all this stuff on the side. And I said to him, I said, no way. I mean, but that's me. You know, I came from a family, came from a blue collar family. My father bought a house in Westchester County, New York. We moved out of the Bronx from an apartment. He put 20% down. Mm -hmm. He bought it for $20,000. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that type of thinking went out the window. Mm -hmm. And by the way, he was out of work in the 1970s when, you know, you had a prop, you had the financial crisis in New York City. At, you know, we had a stagflation, a recession. Mm -hmm. um, never missed a mortgage payment. And I think that's the problem here. We we kind of the average person developed this sort of belief that you know, just borrow and anything could this, happen. This this gets a bit controversial. But did the did the federal government push us in that direction to some extent? Well, the, yes. this idea of uh, the dream of home ownership in two ways. I mean, they pushed Wall Street in that ex in that way by by you know enhancing their risk or or sort of applauding them to take risk by bailing them out. But you think about what happened in 1990, and I talk about this in the book. Uh, Bill Clinton becomes president. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, 1992, mm -hmm. elected mm -hmm. president, takes over in 93. He has a housing. Uh, his HUD czar, housing urban development chief, is named Henry Cisneros. His, his main priority is to take housing penetration from 60% of the population to 70. That means people will own, he wants that many, he mm -hmm. wants 70% he wants of the population to be in a home. Um, by the way, they don't really own the home. They want, he wants them to get loans so they can own right. a home. How right. do you do that? Okay, barring, you know, some economic miracle, which we didn't have, or we, we you know, you can, the miracle can't be that big for that to happen. You need government intervention to create policies that allows that to happen. And I show in the book that Fannie and Freddie began guaranteeing and, and securitizing more risky loans when, when the, the, the Clinton administration mm -hmm. began to push that 60 to 70% mandate.